important message. Now, here's a man with an important message. This is Zafar Bengash, Crescent International. Are you there? Are you there, Zafar? Uh, yes. Hello, Phil. I am. Well, thank you for joining us, Zafar. There's uh, two things I want to make sure I want to get at. One, uh, you, uh, had a, you've been holding uh, meetings around the burning issue of Kashmir, which the I say it's a burning issue. It's, a, it's certainly for the people of Kashmir and the people of the region, but the media here is uh, not uh, paying attention. Uh, what can you tell us? Uh, wh- what is the message of, your, of the meetings you've been holding? Well, we had uh, a meeting on Saturday, October the 28th. Uh, this essentially was to commemorate uh, what the Kashmiri people and their friends uh, observe as Black Day, which was we started basically on October 27, 1947, uh, the date on which um, India sent its army into Kashmir to occupy it illegally because the people had risen against the ruler over there. And although the people, uh, the ruler himself was uh, unelected, he had imposed himself on the people. Uh, the people did not want him to be their ruler. And yet um, he... Uh, in violation of the people's wishes, um, uh, he signed an instrument of accession, or at least that is what is reported traditionally. But anyway, uh, the people were completely unhappy with that, and so they staged an uprising uh, on that date. And uh, naturally, the Indian army that went into Kashmir, they perpetrated a bloodbath, and the army is still there to this day. So that's the day that the people of Kashmir observe every year for the last 70 years. Yeah, and by the way, the United Nations addressed this, saying that it should be resolved peacefully and with a, uh, a uh, referendum of the people, right? In other Absolutely. words, without, without the presence, by the way, of foreign armies, because you cannot vote when an army is standing on your front porch. Exactly. In fact, you know, the people's uprising was um, essentially moving in a way that it was going to take over the entire state. The state is referred to as the state of Jammu and Kashmir. And uh, it was India that took this matter to the United Nations Security Council on uh, January the 1st, 1948. So after about two months, when the people uh, had actually uh, fought the Indian army, and of course Pakistan's army also got involved in it because it relates to Pakistan's uh, future as well. Uh, and India was on the verge of losing the entire state or its army was going to be defeated. So they took the matter to the Security Council and the Security Council passed a resolution. And there have been a series of resolutions, almost uh, more than a dozen of them, mm-hmm. constantly calling for a referendum to be held under the United Nations auspices. Mm -hmm. And India had agreed to it at the time, uh, but uh, of course, once a ceasefire came into effect and then India sent more troops into the state, today India has almost uh, something like a million uh, strong army and uh, constabulary, etc., that terrorize the population in Kashmir. Mm -hmm. So that region is referred to as the most militarized region in the world. Uh, Obviously, if you have a million army for a total population of about 10, 12 million people, then you can imagine what is really going on. And as a consequence, of course, Indian That's a very heavy repression to have an army. Absolutely. I mean, those numbers. You can imagine all the corollary issues you're going to have with foreign, with soldiers. And now, and by the way, is that for the... I noticed something seems very significant based in some of these headlines are starting to be mentioned here now about the determination to go before the Indian. uh, They are taking a case to the Indian court, uh, which in which they're asking that the limitation on buying of land in Kashmir and I guess the presence of non-Kashmiris, which had been protected, uh, is uh, being is to be undermined, and it's. Could you talk about that? Is is it Bill Thirty Four or something? Uh, Article Thirty Four of the Indian Constitution. Somebody wants to know. Article Thirty Five A. There are two articles. One is Article Thirty Five A, and the other is Article Three Seventy. Under mm-hmm. Article Three Seventy, uh, the state of Jammu and Kashmir has been given special status under the Indian Constitution. 
uh, Article 35A actually says that non-Kashmiris are not allowed to purchase land in Kashmir. Because obviously, if they did, then this would gradually change the demographic composition of Kashmir. People are making the analogy with the West Bank. Absolutely. That's exactly what it is. So what Mm -hmm. India is doing is it is settling uh, its um, retired army officers and other people in Kashmir quite surreptitiously and sort of giving them legitimacy and, of course, over a a couple of generations, and these people would call themselves Kashmiris. And so India is also preparing itself for the day that suppose uh, it was forced into holding a referendum in Kashmir that it would have changed the composition of the state to such an extent that perhaps uh, a majority of the pop- the majority of people would not be Kashmiris, but non-Kashmiris, but yet they would still uh, have the right to vote. Uh, oh. One other point, it's important to keep in mind that Prior to 19, uh, or before the, the, the so-called instrument of accession of October 27, 1947, the ruler of the state had actually, uh, first of all, disarmed uh, all the Muslims uh, in, in that region. They, he had ordered that they must surrender their weapons. No such order was issued to, let's say, the, uh, the Hindu inhabitants. Then he went about uh, disarming uh, even those people uh, that had served, uh, or, or in fact, the, the people, Muslims that were serving in the army. So they, he went about disarming them as well, so that uh, mm. they would not be able to resist uh, the, the ruler's uh, wishes in the sense that he was going to whatever nefarious designs he had. Mm-hmm. So these, these provisions, uh, these actions uh, were actually undertaken in order to prepare the ground for the ruler and the Indian army to essentially suppress the people. Mm-hmm. And so now, as you mentioned, that going about uh, changing the demographic composition of Kashmir as well, it had happened in Jammu, where, mm-hmm. uh, in fact, according to the, the, the British Times, uh, it wrote at the time that uh, the, the ruler's army had actually not only perpetrated a bloodbath, but forced about 237,000 Muslims from there to flee for their lives to go into Pakistan. And ethnic cleansing, of course, a campaign of ethnic cleansing had taken place. And so now... Uh, the other ethnic cleansing process is taking place through the uh, demographic change that, you know, people are buying land, uh, Indians are buying land in Kashmir and trying to dilute the Kashmiri population. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it sounds actually very explosive, more so than I than in the past when we've spoken of this matter, particularly with this new matter with the court. Uh, is, that our, is, is it crescent hyphen? Um, Online.net. Online.com. Is that right? Dot net. Dot net. net. I was sitting here writing, and I thought I'm going to get it right, and I got it wrong. So it's (laughs) crescent-online.net. That is correct. In fact, we have a report about our latest, uh, the conference that we held uh, on Saturday. Uh, There's a full report in in the Crescent, and of course, we have been writing about it regularly. But Mm -hmm. as you pointed out, regrettably, over here, uh, the media doesn't pay much attention to it, although I must say... In Britain, there is a much greater coverage of these things uh, because yes. Britain created the problem, so their media yes. is paying more attention. Yeah. But and we're all going to, we'll all inherit the consequences. Zafar, thank you very much. It's my great pleasure, Phil. Thank you yeah, very thank much. Thank you. Bye bye.